Thank you very much. It uh, makes me very nervous to step up here realizing that our time is gone and I have a uh, lot of things to say. It was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised uh, this morning on a routine errand to notice the construction of a branch bank on Jackson Street across from the Mars store almost at the corner of Jackson and Tillotson. I think most, uh, most of you who are architects are interested in that. You drive by and see the uh, solar greenhouse they've built over the construction site to allow uh, masonry construction to proceed. It's, it's kind of interesting application. The first thing I'll talk about is uh, a trip that the energy faculty, uh, Kent's curler, Castor, and myself took. Okay, I understand the slides have uh, changed the order of things. I will, I will begin uh, with the uh, uh, seminar that uh, uh, Curler and myself attended at the Argonne National Laboratory and at which uh, Bill Kenst was a featured speaker. Uh, Argonne is on the outside of uh, Chicago. And from a scanty knowledge of Argonne and its place in the secrecy and clouded development of the uh, atomic bomb and other exotic high, te high technology research, one almost expected to be confronted by an Orwellian world, and one wasn't really disappointed. A forest interrupts the industrial sprawl of far west Chicago. This is it. When you leave the interstate, it's a different world. Landscape has an unnatural naturalness about it. Herds of albino Asian deer conjure up images of a technology gone awry. They wander everywhere among unapologetic, raw, powerful, pure engineering works and systems. Security gates, guards, landscape, history, albino, deer, massive research apparatus truly conjured up in our Orwellian world, and this was a setting. Gathered together at this setting were people from uh, wide reaches of uh, society that were in influenced in dealing with uh, the solar energy, energy technology, energy crisis. From John G. Stewart, the Con Congressional Joint Economics Committee gave us certain insight as to the legislation, laws, general feeling of the uh, government and its programs and how they were going about it. We had uh, people who were uh, specialist engineers uh, in the field of uh, development of heat pumps and they gave us some insights into the kind of technology and new developments we could expect to see in the next few years and the kinds of energy efficiency we might expect out of the heat pump industry. Kent's talked to us about the recycling of buildings and potential for energy conservation in that area. We looked at the work of the Argonne National Laboratory in the development and testing of um, solar collection apparatus. We uh, we heard speeches and, and presentations by people who were uh, uh, trying to communicate to us some of the national feeling about uh, alternative energy sources and gave us some insight into the California scene and the, and the opposition to nuclear energy and, and some insight as to where we think, where they think some of that is going to go in the future. We heard an interesting anecdote from John Stewart who uh, is connected with Ted Kennedy in Washington and I'll uh, relay it to you because I think it's kind of interesting. Sometime following AIA presentation to the Senate on energy and the potentials in architecture for energy conscious design, Ted Kennedy was attending the presentation for the new design for the Kennedy Memorial Library designed by I.M. Pei's office and to be built at the University of Massachusetts. Following the presentation, Ted Kennedy began questioning the design from the point of view of the energy conscious design as presented and explained by the AIA, and finally concluded it would be disastrous to proceed as it was designed. The building design was restudied, made more, ener more energy efficient as a result of Kennedy's efforts and as a result of our professional efforts. What we're, what we're seeing here are, are some uh, some of the test apparatus, there's sort of this mobile rig up on the left and a variety of linear, basically linear collectors were assembled there and being tested. This, this again is a, the research work of Argonne National Laboratory. As you can probably surmise from this, these are tracking collectors. 
and this is the uh, general landscape setting in which the whole uh, high technology experimental research is being taking place. Yes. I can't see. Yeah. Is that true? And you're seeing the effects of the tornado, right? We knew as a high wind damage, you can see the uh, sheared trees and so forth. Anyway, uh, it was extremely Orwellian type of scene amidst this kind of landscape, which is all new. Uh, all kind of high technology apparatus and these strange deer. It just, it's really strange. Okay, I th I'm back on uh, schedule now. The uh, slides are where the lecture is. Uh, first of all, the East Coast trip. What was it? It was a trip from uh, Muncie to Washington, D.C. area, and from the D.C. area up to Boston and back. Uh, Kent, Castor, Curler, myself were involved. And this was, uh, again, at the beginning of the summer. I spent about a week on the road, a uh, fairly intensive agenda of established contacts. The purpose of this trip was to attempt to identify potential uh, research uh, sources, money sources, try to find out what the rules were of the game, try to find out how Ball State can get actively involved in the national effort. We evaluated several potential uh, sites. Uh, first of all, Arizona, the Sun Belt, and concluded that mostly hardware development was taking place there. We looked at the West Coast, where you can see a second generation collector uh, uh, development pioneers are working. We looked up at the East Coast and we selected the East Coast for the following reasons. Uh, first of all, an emphasis upon energy conservation as a thing. To, I think the quick answers haven't simply materialized and people are saying now, well, it's going to take longer than we thought and in the meanwhile, we better conserve as much as we can. So energy conservation as a result is moving up to high priority. Fred Dubin in the uh, uh, in New York City is perhaps one of the experts, and he was on our agenda and proved to be uh, quite a highlight. Uh, the East Coast also presented a similarity of in environmental uh, climatological conditions, so we said, well, if it'll work up there, we probably have a good chance with it here. We're also interested in IRTA. IRTA is sort of the mother, mother load. It's where it's all happening, and if you want to get involved, you've got to make contact with uh, IRTA, find out how they play the game, because if they aren't in the center of it, they're probably directing the game. While, uh, while in route, we stopped at the University of Delaware, and uh, Carl Bohr, Maria Telkis, Eutectic Salts, Solar One, Photovoltaic Research, Ezra Aaron Krantz in New York, who is directing, uh, supervising the testing of the massive IRTA Department of Defense uh, solar program. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The, uh, let me go back and say, first of all, uh, the energy faculty at that point in time said our future, the future of our, our involvement, basically, uh, we're not mechanical, me mechanical engineers, we're not physicists, and there are plenty of these guys out there involved in hardware and equipment uh, development. That's not our bag. The, uh, also, it appears that the hardware field is flooded with researchers, and this, we don't need to duplicate that effort. Um, Ball State, uh, likewise, is not located on an engineering campus. We can't walk, walk across the street and get engineering back up. So the question was, what can we do here at Ball State? Well, we have a strong, in, we have a strong ar architectural program. Hardware is being developed, but the question is, how does it integrate and made part of the architecture? How is architecture made more responsive to it? What can we do to make architecture more responsive to environment? We identified this as our area. We identified the East Coast as a place where we could potentially uh, have the best results. Well, what kind of results have, uh, have we been able to report from this? Well, a $50,000 IRTA research proposal for a workshop. Uh, we have uh, established and expanded the uh, energy collection as a resource for uh, CAP plus the uh, rest of the university as an outgrowth of that trip. Uh, slides, experience, insights, uh, contacts. Trip, places, people, highlights. First stop was Erda, Washington. Met with Dr. Leash. Found out basically what they're doing. Found out how they do it and uh, how you're going to have to play the game to get involved. 
made contact, learned the names of other key people and other agencies that uh, how we might begin to have an influence in what's happening. From there to HUD, David Moore, program planner, solar heating, cooling demonstration program, David Rosoff, director of energy conservation programs, etc. National Bureau of Standards, uh, that's where we are now. This is uh, with Jim Hill Energy Conservation Program. You're looking at a solar townhouse, solar house, elaborately instrumented light bulbs program to simulate human loading conditions. Laboratories and abandoned missile sites in which uh, this is an abandoned missile site. The uh, solar hardware is put on top of a platform. It's lowered down at night. The uh, the flaps on the top cover the whole thing up. A little bit of the Orwellian world out here as well. Thermographic studies, camera analysis of heat loss and leaks, uh, got some insight, got some explanation how it works. Outside of uh, Washington, D.C., over in McLean, McLean, Virginia, we took a look at uh, Madeira School. We don't know too much about it. We know that uh, as a solar design project, it was, and as a uh, architectural piece, it's pretty interesting. Exclusive uh, private girls' school. We were allowed to drive through, weren't allowed to stop or get out. <laughs> this place is, uh, the place is run by a retired admiral or something like that, and runs a pretty tight ship. <laughs> Next stop was the Institute of Solar Energy Conversion, University of Delaware, Newark, Delaware. Dr. Ellen Barnett, director. Kevin O'Connor, Dr. Bohr. Many of you probably heard Dr. Bohr speak last year at uh, Emmons Auditorium. This is the uh, Solar One, it's the name of the house. It was uh, designed by um, Weiss, uh, designed by Harry Weiss. It's, uh, most of you probably know a lot of the solar stuff isn't, uh, from design point of view, too nice. It's kind of a nice house. A lot of the uh, solar houses you see are test facilities. Well, this one is a test facility. It's computer. Uh, 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 monitored and there people are living. It's quite nice architecturally. Uh, some of the interesting features of it would be the eutectic salt system, uh, which is used in the heat, uh, I mean, you know, heat storage system. The use of photovoltaic. Uh, okay, and the funding uh, for this is kind of interesting. Where does that institute get its money? Local utilities uh, who are interested in uh, finding ways to shape peak loads. We discussed with them the possibility of a collaboration on future research. They were enthusiastic about it. The, the next stop in the, in the trip was New York City. I might add that, uh, that uh, Delaware Solar One House, uh, we, we found a lot of people having an awful lot of trouble with... Uh, with PPG collectors, and I'm not trying to put out a negative on them, but almost every project we went to, they had formerly had PPG and had taken them down and replaced them with something else. New York City, Fred Dubin of Dubin Mendenhall Bloom. You've seen his name everywhere connected with solar. From the left is a view from a hotel window over downtown. To the right is a view from, uh, I'm not sure if that's Ezra Aaron Kranz's window. Yeah. Uh, Fred Dubin is an uh, extremely creative and in innovative engineer. The experience of being with him for a few minutes is overwhelming. The vitality of his mind and his ability to probe new directions and new possibilities, it's worth the trip in itself. He suggested to us a variety of areas where he felt uh, we might, on the basis of who we were and where we were, be reliably designed. Task energy requirements and research to provide more reliable and specific data about uh, energy cost of various kinds of activities. From there, we went to the office of Ezra Aaron Krantz Associates, New York City, who is uh, involved extensively in the field testing of, of the uh, uh, IRTA projects in the four climatic regions of the United States. He talked to us about a very interesting a joint venture they have with an insurance company. I'm not sure if Dubin's involved or not, but uh, the essence of the deal is this, and this tells you that we're talking about solid business now. They'll go in and uh, pick out an office building or some other kind of large-scale building, do the study, say, uh, we will install the uh, energy conservation equipment in this building for you free. The only catch is you share the energy savings 50-50. And that's the catch. So uh, energy conservation is not something that someone does if they're altruistic. It's a good, solid business, or else uh, intelligent business people wouldn't be making those kind of propositions. 
20% return. Okay, very good. Got some stuff out of phase here. Okay, this is the, uh, on the left of the screen is a home of uh, Norm Sanders. He's a typical, or stereotypical Yankee, retired. He's his own man, conservative, inventive, rugged individualist. And he tells the story his way and he does things his own way. He's a pioneer. The house was built in the 60s. He's had uh, probably every conceivable type of collector on the roof, tested them, found out what's good about them, what doesn't work about them. Uh, he is a solar consultant, a chemical engineer, fluid mechanics, mechanical circuits. He uh, was the uh, solar consultant on the uh, school to the right. This is the Cambridge Prep School. That's a very interesting uh, type of system. There's a stair tread and riser kind of arrangement with aluminum reflective surfaces, and it takes advantage of the fact that the sun's at a lower angle, coming in from a lower angle in the winter, higher angle in the summer. The tread and riser is to exclude that. At one time in the design, there was a rolling shutter that would uh, physically cover the roof in the summertime. The uh, light comes through, strikes the back wall, which is made of extremely heavy masonry and provides a heat sink, flywheel effect. The space was a very pleasant space. I think you can see that. And it's, uh, it's really gratifying to see that, uh, that solar or energy conscious design can also be, uh, I think, visually uh, very sensitive. This is the, uh, a project by uh, Mr. Mark Heyman, uh, Waltham, Massachusetts. At this point in the process, we began to realize that the active, we began to realize and appreciate the active role being played by the retired and uh, older, well-capitalized uh, business person or the older retired person who had a sense of mission to make some contribution. This is a uh, house that was built. He had built a previous test structure, and uh, he built this house as an entrepreneurial effort, and uh, he had a couple of objectives in mind. One of them was to make a house which he felt would uh, provide an acceptable design for the average market and would also be energy efficient. He claims it's 100% efficient for heating. 100% of the heat comes from it. It's a flat plate collector of his own design. The, uh, I wish you could see the uh, internal plumbing system. It's a work of art. We're talking about a house here that's in the uh, 100,000 plus market. This is uh, out of phase uh, set of slides. Uh, these are Acorn Homes in Acton, Mass. Uh, John Bemis may ring a bell with some of you. He was absolutely one of the pioneers in the prefabrication uh, industry, and the quality of their product was most impressive. And these are prefabricated houses. Uh, it's not all surface, it's quality throughout. And on the, on the right-hand slide in the uh, left, you can see a garage on which they have a uh, collector of their own design in collaboration with Raytheon. Formerly on that roof were PPG collectors, which failed. Now they're Raytheon collectors. The, uh, there were several interesting features about it, and uh, the collector was, uh, was, uh, was experimental. The uh, tank design was rather, rather interesting. In a semi-basement space, they had built a tank out of uh, wood with a neoprene liner. Uh, we got a cost figure of $17 a square foot additional cost to the house for the total system. Not too often did we get actual cost. And as you can see, sometimes the detailing on these things aren't all you would like. Following the uh, stop at, uh, Ray, at the uh, uh, Acorn Industries, we went by Tyco Industries, who it's a manufacturer of CDS cells, and uh, talked with Dr. Ravi about the uh, market potential of, of uh, economically uh, efficient uh, photovoltaic, and uh, they're working like heck on it, but they aren't there yet. This is the Ames House in Groton, Connecticut. Uh, Don Watson's the architect, solar consultant, E.H. Bar Barber. They're both teaching at Yale. The house is being con constructed by the son of the owner, who is a theatrics graduate. Beautiful site location. Once again, we find that the house is the product of a uh, retired individual who has a commitment for the furtherance of the cause of energy conservation. The uh, person who had experienced the brownouts and uh, was interested in developing an environment that was energy self-sufficient. So solar panels from SunWorks, 
within the house, the use of heat later. A solar greenhouse to be on the left of the house that you see there. It's on the ocean side. Uh, there were a couple of interesting uh, lessons, I think, to be learned from the house, and I'm not sure how universal this is, but the owner had $35,000 in cash invested in the house, and he needed another 35000 to finish it, and the local lending institutions were extremely reluctant to lend him that money in spite of the incredible investment he had in it. And the... Uh, we had very interesting uh, talk and conversation with the builder of that house. This is the Clarence Frank House, Seoul, I see, Westbrook, Connecticut, also designed by Watson and Barber. Once again, the owner is a retired uh, businessman with a sense of mission to somehow further the uh, development of this thing. The, uh, they're using Sunworks collectors, uh, about a $60,000 house. It's a award-winning design. Uh, According to the owners, they get about 75% of their heat and hot water from the uh, system. 